Pavel Sasko, one of the two game directors for the upcoming cyberpunk sequel, recently appeared on the Flow Games podcast. In the interview, he covered a wide range of topics. I've summarized some of the less frequently discussed points here in this video. Sasko talked about the transition from CD Projekt Red to Unreal Engine, the development and application of artificial intelligence in video games, and he talked about secrets in Night City. Let's talk about the engine switch. Sasko explained that decisions about selecting a new engine are not made overnight. Instead, an extensive research phase precedes the decision during which developers evaluate whether the new technology meets their needs. He emphasized that the switch to Unreal Engine 5 is essentially similar to upgrading to a new version of their in-house read engine, as both involve adopting new technologies. Sasko stated, We started with the Aurora engine, which BioWare used a long time ago. We licensed it and rewrote 80% of it to create the Genie engine for the first Witcher. With the knowledge we gained, we wrote Read Engine from scratch for the second Witcher. Then we rewrote Red Engine 1 and created Red Engine 2 for The Witcher 2's extended edition, and then again for The Witcher 3, which was Red Engine 3. The same thing happened with Cyberpunk 2077 and Red Engine 4. Many players think that Red Engine 4 is the same as Red Engine 1, but that's not true. Only a small part of the technology resembles earlier versions of the engine. A lot of players think that Red Engine 4 is the same as Red Engine 1. Mm -hmm. It's not. Sasko believes that the biggest challenges lie in the design process, not the technical aspects. Therefore, he doesn't see the transition to Unreal Engine 5 as critical as many players perceive it to be. May look um, hardcore for the players that, uh, from outside who make the, the decision that is the best for our games looking forward. He also noted that it's possible to integrate some elements of the Reed Engine into Unreal Engine 5 to benefit from the insights gained there. However, he didn't reveal what exactly and to what extent they might port from Red Engine to avoid disclosing the developer's plans for the Cyberpunk 2077 sequel. I have often assumed that they will carry over quite a bit from Cyberpunk 2077 to save time, such as the meticulously recorded vehicle sounds and Night City itself. Transferring the city as a whole would save a tremendous amount of time. They had worked with professional city planners to design it, as creating such a city isn't easy. Incorporating Night City would make a significant difference. But he didn't say this. On the other hand, what other assets would reveal any plans? Well, we'll see. About the new engine, Sasko said, I can already say that there are things Unreal Engine 5 does very well, and there are things I look at and think they could be better. But I can say the same about Reed Engine. Every technology has its limits. Sasko highlighted that the release of Unreal Engine 5 represents a significant step that aims to make the game development process more accessible and straightforward, though it also raises player expectations. He recalled that at the beginning of his career 19 years ago, he had to order books from the US to learn how to use engines because YouTube was not an option, as it was in its infancy back then. YouTube was just emerging, and besides cat videos and that zoo video, there wasn't much to see. Now, the platform has complete training courses and channels dedicated to training novice developers, and more and more indie developers are benefiting. Sasko also commented on artificial intelligence. He compared the introduction of AI to the advent of Photoshop and noted that the industry is still unsure if AI will have a similarly revolutionary impact. In his view, there are many promises but few concrete successes in applying AI to game development so far. However, he believes some monotonous processes could be accelerated by AI. If I need to automate tests that have to be done every week, so a character runs a specific route, the system tracks performance, graphically shows the difference between versions, and optionally creates a JIRA issue if the difference is too great, AI is already excellent for that, Sasko said. Regarding creative applications, anything generative AI produces is still too far from being usable in any meaningful way. In certain environments, this problem can be solved, but so far no one has succeeded. When people try to cut costs using AI, it only leads to a drop in quality. As an industry, we need to find a way to use this tool to actually improve the quality of games. Sasko is therefore quite skeptical about the use of AI in creative areas, but acknowledges that AI can be helpful in certain aspects. I am quite skeptical about the creative work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Everything we are seeing is very derivative and it's uh, very far yeah. from anything usable. The two hosts of the podcast wanted to know if there are still references and other secrets in Cyberpunk 2077 that haven't been found yet. Sasko responded that off the top of his head, he could think of a few things that no one has discovered. I know about yeah. a couple examples right now from the top of my head 
that I never saw. So yes, there are still some secrets to be found. As an example, he mentioned a detail that was only recently discovered. In Phantom Liberty, there's a scene that is actually a reference to this particular image. This shows that the secrets are more about smaller details rather than big mysteries. So Chum, there probably won't be an underground city in Night City. Or will there be? Sasko also mentioned that the developers are aware that players will search through the game's files. And there will be people that will data mine that game. Mm -hmm. yeah. They will just try to look into files. So we know it. Like we know that players will do it, right? So we can plan for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, you can hide we the can, files. We well, <laughs> yeah, can change we, the name we, of the file. Uh, we can, uh, we can do it. Yeah. We can do it, and we can do various things. We can plan for it. In other words, the developers don't just hide their secrets in Night City; they also hide the related data in the files to ensure that the secrets can only be discovered by actually playing the game. So, is there a file titled Underground City or a Cow Level? No, probably not. Sasko talked about various topics, such as why they chose the first-person perspective, how Keanu Reeves was cast, and of course, the launch and major changes of Cyberpunk 2077, among other things. If you're interested, check out the video description where I've linked the full interview. There's another piece of news unrelated to the podcast. Mary Kenny has been hired by CD Projekt Red as a senior writer for Orion, the Cyberpunk 2 project. She was previously the associate narrative director for the upcoming PlayStation 5 game Marvel's Wolverine by Insomniac Games and had worked as a writer on Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales. Before her time at Insomniac, she worked at Telltale Games on several episodes of The Walking Dead and Batman The Enemy Within. Her role in Cyberpunk 2 involves crafting storylines, dialogues, scenes, and characters for the project. The team for Orion is steadily growing, and I can't wait to see what delicious things they come up with for us. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this summary and found it informative, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more updates and insights on Cyberpunk 2077. See you next time.